If you work in e-commerce and you use Google Analytics 4, you need data to improve your website and just be good at your job. But if you use the wrong reports and metrics, you will just waste your time and not get any valuable insights. That's why in this video, I'll show you the six most useful reports in GA4 specifically for e-commerce. By using these reports, you'll be able to get valuable insights about what is working and what should you prioritize. <laughs> Hello, data people. I'm Robert from Quicks.ly and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. The first report gives you a nice overview of what people are doing on your website and where are they dropping off. If you can improve the drop-off rate, you will see it in your revenue. But first, let's pretend I'm a user and I'm looking for a YouTube hoodie. In this case, I found it here on Google. I'm going to click on this. This will take you to the Google Merch, uh, merch Shop. And here I look around and I see, yes, this is exactly what I want. I'm going to add it to the cart, add to cart. And then I'm going to proceed and go to the shopping cart. So I want to take a look there. But for some reason, actually, uh, now this is not for me. And I'm going to skip it just because I don't have the money right now. If somebody would go through this journey on your website, how would you know? Well, this is where the, the purchase journey report comes in and you can find it in reports. And it's usually inside monetization and then purchase journey. What does it tell us? So first of all, we have here uh, five steps. You have session start, view product, add to cart, begin checkout and purchase. Keep in mind, this is a closed funnel. So you kind of had to have all of these so that, for example, purchase, you had to have all of these so that you can be counted in this funnel. So if I scroll down, you can see you can also uh, filter here by device category and you can also change some other ones. You have uh, the same data here as in these uh, in this graph. What I like to look at here is uh, I want to look at the progression rate. So obviously here, 36 percent progressed. Then you have 21, 35, 48. I would definitely look into this one first because 21, uh, you know, on average, we are seeing something 35 and here's 21. So there's a problem with add to cart here. So for some reason, people are viewing products, but they're not adding to the cart. This report is already telling you a lot, but I, if you want to make it even better, then you would need to recreate it in the explorations tab. And if you don't know how to use explorations, you can check out, there's a video right here. You can just click on it and it'll take you to the right place. But basically I would recreate it. I will create a funnel report there. And what that enables you to do is actually look at this per channel. So for example, email versus uh, paid ads, or you could also look on campaign level, just, you know, comparing uh, two campaigns to, to each other. How well are they performing in terms of user journey? So instead of seeing device category, you could also choose other uh, dimensions here. The second report is essential to make sure you're bringing high quality users to your site. Because if you bring people that are not interested in your products, they obviously they are not going to buy. Bluntly put, garbage in, garbage out. This is why when I try to diagnose why our shop's revenue is down, I turn to the acquisition report. And I even created a system to diagnose why my shop's revenue has decreased or increased. I teach the system and how to get insights in my GA4 for e-commerce course, which really focuses on the e-commerce insights without any of the technical stuff. A link will be in the description down below. Anyway, let's go back to the acquisition report. The second report I like to look at is the traffic acquisition. So you can get there from reports and then you have here traffic acquisitions, usually under acquisition or something similar. These titles might be different depending on your setup, but it's usually traffic acquisition. So, and what this report tells us is what channels bring us users to our website. So for example, in my case, I clicked earlier on this one. This means it's Google search. So I would be considered as uh, organic search when I click on this. And this is what they would reflect in the uh, traffic acquisition. If I scroll down here, you can see we have different channels here, but you can also adjust that. For example, if you don't want to look at the channels, you could uh, look directly on medium or even think at campaign level. But from here, we can say, okay, I want to look at email and I can just come here and filter by email. And now uh, I need to add a secondary dimension and I would add something like campaign here, session campaign. So now I can compare different campaigns and which one are performing the best. Now, what one thing that is missing in this report, and I don't know why GA4 didn't add it by default, but you don't have purchase conversion rate here, which would tell us, you know, how well are we converting users to customers? In this case, you don't see it there, but you can add it quite easily by adding a few calculated metrics. 
And if you know, uh, if you want to know how to add a calculated metric, it takes about five minutes. You can click on this banner here in the top right corner, and that'll take you to my tutorial how to create calculated metrics in GA4. Again, it's pretty quick. And that way you can add them here. I would definitely do that. I would add conversion rate and average order value. Now, the second thing I want to mention is that you can also create a custom reports here. You can take this traffic acquisition and modify it slightly. And for example, if you're an email marketeer, you don't want to every time come here and filter by email and then, you know, then you need to add a session campaign and so on. No, you want to directly see these campaigns because you're only interested in that and you can just click from uh, on them from here. And it's quite easy to do. It's just a setup in GA4. So if you want to know how to do that, you can just click on the top uh, uh, on the banner here on the top. I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. That way, uh, if you have different teams in your organization, you can set up one report for each of them. I, you know, one could be for Facebook ads and Instagram ads and another one for email and a third one, for example, for organic search. Really depends on the team you have. That way you just save a lot of time and frustration by not, you know, waiting for the reports to load and things like that. It's just quicker that way. Now, what if you want to know what are the top selling products on your site? Well, this is where the third report comes in and it's called e-commerce purchase report. This is where you can see how many people viewed, added to cart and purchased a specific product or a SKU number. And you can find it under reports and then you go to monetization and e-commerce purchases. Again, the monetization might be called slightly differently. So in this report, if you just scroll down, you can see that here are all the top viewed products. You can also just uh, click on this little arrow and it will sort by item revenue. That means the most sold ones. So for example, for this store, uh, this is what they're selling the most. It's a recycled backpack. Not only can you see it by item name, but you could also filter by item ID or, or SKU number. And there's a few other options here. And if you need to see more rows, you can just come here and click, for example, 50. And this is your uh, 50 best sellers. From here, you can take a look how they're selling. Now, what's missing here? And again, you need calculated metrics to see those. But I would definitely add add to cart rate and the PDP to purchase rate. So add to cart rate is interesting because that way you can compare the different products. Uh, you know, some of these are viewed a lot. But then, you know, they're not actually added to cart so much. So, for example, here you have 2000 uh, views and only 175 is uh, added to cart. And you can see here is a product, for example, this one. Wow. You know, 436 saw on this and 411 actually added to their basket. That's pretty good ratio, right? So we want to look at that add to cart ratio to see which products are actually converting the best. So that's something I go more in depth in my GA4 for e-commerce course. Uh, there I really uh, look at what we need as e-commerce specialist and which reports are the most useful and how to use them as well. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description. The Ford report is essential to understand how well our sales pages are converting users to customers or actually not only sales pages, but any page on our site. I'm talking about the landing page report, which will tell us what page people saw first during their journey, how, how well the page is performing in terms of revenue and user engagement. So the Ford report will tell us what is the first page we see on the website. So again, I'm just going to the same example. Here I am in Google. So if I click and I land on this page, this will be the first page I, I, I saw on our website. So for that, we can use the landing page report and it's in the reports and then you have engagement or something similar and then landing page. So all of these pages are the first pages that people saw. That's the difference between landing pages and pages and screens. So landing page is the first page people saw and pages and screens are just in, they count everybody. So if I go from this page, for example, to another uh, page, for example, with these socks. In landing page report, I'll be only counted for the hoodie. But for this report, pages and screens, I'll be counted uh, for both the hoodie page and also the socks page. Now, landing page report is super important because we can compare how our landing pages are performing. Now, unfortunately, by default, again, we're missing some of the really crucial uh, metrics here. You can also sort here by revenue and this way you can at least see, okay, which, which of these. So here basket is bringing most money, but that makes sense because yeah, if you have some email campaigns that have uh, like an abandoned basket or something, then that would make sense. 
but also you have here, these are like kind of the top listers that they have. So you see they bring most money. Now I would definitely add here the uh, AOV and also conversion rate. That way you will see much better, especially if you have landing pages that are really salesy, uh, that how well they're performing. If you have, you know, if you're selling only Google ads traffic there, how well is it performing? That's where you need conversion rate and AOV so you can compare them to other similar pages. Not only that, but you can see here also how well people are engaging on these pages. So for example, uh, these all of these look pretty good, but here, what, what's happening here? This collectible, 36 seconds only on the page. So clearly they land, but they're, they don't like something and they leave the site. That is way too short compared to the, uh, to the website's average. The next report is the coupon code or promo code report. For some reason, Google decided to hide it deep down in, in its maze. But I find it essential for any e-commerce shop because we use coupons for so many different campaigns. And obviously we want to look at the results and get some insights from them. I'm here in monetization and overview. And if I scroll down, scroll, scroll, you can see I have here purchase revenue by order coupon. If I click on that, unfortunately for this store, there is no order coupons at all. But if you're using any type of promo codes or, you know, order coupons, then they would show up here. And here you can see that you could see the how many people purchase with that coupon and also the uh, the revenue. So quite important if you have different campaigns you have you know affiliates coming in or maybe some other partners are buying from you that way you can compare who's bringing most revenue and i would advise add this report to just having here in somewhere in between you can do that quite easily if you have the correct rights in ga4 i'll show you how to do that you can just click on this banner here and it will take you to a tutorial how to add this next let's take a look at the sixth report which i kind of already mentioned earlier and it's the funnel exploration report in the explorations tab in my opinion it's the most powerful feature of ga4 but you need to create them yourself from scratch and you can't just download a template but it's worth the time to learn because it's so flexible. Look, you can just drag and drop metrics and dimensions and it will work, it's magic. Since it's so flexible, it's hard to know where to start without wasting time. I've created this video here to show you how to use the explorations report so that you can improve your website and achieve higher revenue. 